حجرة في أبدانهم وفي وجوههم وعلى رؤوسهم منذ خلقت الدنيا إلى يوم سيدنا محمد عبده وحبيبه ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وزواجه وسابت عيد خلفاء رشيد محدين من بعد وزن مت على تحقيق خصوصا من ملامة خلفاء رسول الله تحقيق أمر المؤمنين حضرة أبو بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي ولا بقي صابت تابين رضوان الله تعالى عليه مجمعين يا أيها المؤمنون الحاضرون لك الله تعالى وتؤن الله من الذين تقوى الذين هم محسنين Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil anbiya'in wa mursalin Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa la'ali wa sahbihi ajma'in All praises are due to Allah Who knows the number of the breaths of his creatures By his pre-eternal knowledge He sees the movements of the feet of ants in the dark night The birds glorify him in their nests And wild animals celebrate his glory in the wilderness He has full knowledge of the actions of his servants, the open and the hidden. And may all peace and blessings be upon our master Muhammad the finest of your prophets, the noblest of your friends, the leader of your saints, the seal of your prophets, the beloved of the world, of the Lord of the worlds, the witness for the messengers, the advocate of the sinners, the master of all the children of Adam. And may all peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the Khulafa Rashidin, Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, Hazrat Usman Al Ghani, and Hazrat Ali Al Murtaza, and all those who follow them until the last day. Allahumma barik lana fi Rajab wa Shaaban wa balighna Ramadan. Amen. O believers, servants of Allah, welcome to you on this holy day of Juma, the Eid of the believers. Welcome to you on a day that the Holy Prophet والسلام, is calling the best day that the sun has ever risen upon. O believers, we have reached to the last Juma of the month of Allah, Shahru Rajab. We should take accounting of ourselves. This month of planting has come and now it has almost left us. Inshallah Rahman, we are asking our Lord to count us amongst those that have planted good seeds that will bear good fruits in the month of Ramadan. We're asking our Lord to accept whatever weak service we have made to him, 
to accept our weak worshipping in the nights of Raghaib and Miraj, and to accept our sincere tawbah. And now that Rajab has almost passed, we are standing at the threshold of the second of the three holy months. Inshallah, Rahman, in a few days we will enter into the Shahrul Nabi, the holy month of Sha'ban. The Holy Prophet والسلام, is explaining the holiness of this month, the month of Sha'ban, to us in his Hadith Sharif, coming to us from Ghaus al Azam, Shaykh Abdul Qadir Gilani Qadaz al Wasir, saying, Allah chose the month of Sha'ban and made it the Prophet والسلام's own month. So just as the Prophet والسلام, is the most excellent of prophets, his month is the most excellent of months. As believers, we should not neglect this month. The Holy Prophet والسلام, himself is warning us in his Hadith Sharif saying, Sha'ban is a month between Rajab and Ramazan. People tend to neglect it. But that is when the deeds of his servants descends to the Lord of all the worlds. So I would rather mine rise up while I'm fasting. And Hazrat Aisha radiallahu an asked the Holy Prophet والسلام, one time, Ya Rasulullah, how is it I always see you fasting in Sha'ban? And he said, والسلام, Ya Aisha, it is the month in which the angel of death has to note down the name of anyone whose soul he must take before the year is out. So I would rather he did not record my name except while I'm fasting. Shri Abdul Qadir Gilani, Qadir is advising the believers about this month, saying, instead of being in ghaflat during this month, every sincere believer must push himself in preparation for the coming month of Ramadan, using the days that remain to get clear of sins and repent of those committed in the past. One should beg to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the month of Sha'ban. One should appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the owner of the month, Muhammad alayhi until the corruption of one's heart is corrected and the sickness of one's inner being is cured. This must be done without delay and not put off until tomorrow. For the days are three. Yesterday, which is a date in the history. Today, which is a time for action. And tomorrow, which is a hopeful expectation for whether you will get there or not is beyond your knowledge. Thus, yesterday is a warning. Today is an opportunity. And tomorrow is a risk. In the same way, the months are three. Rajab now passed and gone beyond return. Ramazan awaiting in a future you may not live to see. And in between we have Shaban. So let us seize this opportunity for worshipful devotion. And the friends of Allah speak the truth. Ya yuhal mu'minun. Make intention to run in the way of Allah in this month. We must not forget that we are going to die. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Every soul shall have a taste of death, and we test you by evil and by good, by way of trial. To us, you must return. Sadaqallah al Azim. And the Holy Prophet والسلام, is saying in his Hudbah Sharif, O people, you have guideposts, so follow your guideposts. And you have an end, so turn toward that end. Indeed, a believer is living between two worries. Worry about a past period of life for which he doesn't know how Allah will treat him. And what is left of his life, where he doesn't know what Allah put in his destiny. So the servant must control himself for his own sake and must derive benefit from this dunya for his ahirat and from his youth for
for his old age and from his life for his death. By whose hand Muhammad's soul is, والسلام, there will be no second chance after death and there is no other abode after the worldly abode except paradise or hell. O oh believers, the Holy Prophet والسلام's words, they are haq. They contain everything we need to live in this life. He is also saying, O oh people, the smartest amongst you is the one who remembers death the most. And the wisest amongst you is the one who is best ready for it. Indeed, among the signs of wisdom are turning away from the falsehood of this life, turning toward eternal life, being fully equipped to live in the grave and being ready for the day of judgment. Your no believers, we have reached the Ahir Zaman. In this Ahir Zaman, the believers have abandoned this hadith and this teaching of the Rasulullah. Nobody wants to think about death. Nobody wants to prepare for the grave. Nobody wants to think about the next life. Secular type Muslims want to live in this dunya forever and, wo and forget about Allah. Scholar type Muslims are making thousand year plans for their universities. Everyone is busy with their own agenda. But nobody is busy with remembering that they're going to die and they're going to meet their Lord. Even if they see in the news 1,000 times a day the news of death. Even in the masjids today they are saying, don't scare people with that remembrance of death. And we are also remembering, not the death, but the veiling of our grand sheikh in these days. It should bring us to some wakefulness that the best of them are taken away from this world. And the days ahead are not good days ahead. The days ahead are very challenging and difficult for the believers. Dajjal is rising and only when there is complete darkness will Mahdi salam declare himself. This is not a time of light. This is not a time of love. This is not a time of laughter. This is a time for us to worry and to prepare ourselves. Because what happens when we forget about death? The Holy Prophet told us that this was going to happen. And he told us the consequence of forgetting death. Our Shaykh, Sahib al Sayyid, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabrisi al Rabbani, Qadrasullah Sir, explaining the words of Rasulullah to us, saying, He is saying to the Sahabi Kiram, saying, Their enemies, the enemies of the Muslims, will all come together against them and they will finish them. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, is it because our number is going to be very less at that time than them? He said, no. Their number is going to be more than them. But you are not going to be able to do anything. Why? Because the nation of Muhammad is going to fall in love with his dunya. They are going to love dunya more than Allah and more than Ahirat. And they are going to hate to hear of death. They are not going to want to hear about death. They are going to run away from death. And that is the time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to remove the haybat of Islam away from you. And the unbelievers are going to look at you and they are going to see nothing there. They are going to attack and they are going to finish you. Is that what's happening to this nation? Is that what's happening to this Ummat? Say, somebody say, where are the scholars? Where are the alims of this nation? Say, yes, that's what's happening. 
That's what's happened to this nation because the khutbah place, this khutbah place became a place for the imams to collect money. This is what happened. The khutbah is to remind the believers to say to them what kind of situation they are in. Not having any fear from anyone. Having fear from Allah. So yes, the nation they forgot the death. When we forget death, we lose the fear of Allah. And when we fall into that wretched state, then the haybat of Islam and the protection is lifted from us and we fall into the disgraced state we are in today. Never forget, this is the worst time in the history of Islam. This is not the time of love and light and laughter. This is the worst time. But the believers were not always like this. Our leaders were not always like this. Our leaders just 100 years ago, they were the best of men. They were the inheritors of the Holy Prophet. They were sultans, sons of sultans, ghazis, the sons of ghazis. And they were remembering death. They were remembering their Lord. They were remembering their Prophet. And they were remembering the friends of Allah. And they were preparing for their graves. And they were longing for Ahirat. They were the most intelligent of men according to the definition of Rasulullah and for that reason they were honored. And because they were honored, their nation was honored. The Ottoman Sultans, they were remembering death. Which one of our leaders today remember death? When they would walk to the Jami on Yamul Juma, there would be an attendant walking with them saying, Ya Sultan, do not forget, you are a human. O oh Sultan, do not forget, you will die. Imagine saying this to our leaders today. Imagine saying this to the Alims today. Imagine saying this to the Shaykhs today. The Sultans, they ruled the seven climates. But their greatest honor came from being the servants of Allah, of His Messenger and of the Awliya Allah. Listen to the words of Sultan Sulaiman the Magnificent, Kanuni Sultan Sulaiman, who is saying, I begin in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, secret or open. Nothing is hidden from you. Ya Rabbi, heal my anguish-stricken heart. You're the wise one who knows a cure for all patients. Merciful Lord, thanks to you, you made this servant of yours Muslim. Keep my faith to the last breath. Do not let the accursed shaitan come near me. Ya Allah, for the sake of Mustafa, your messenger, grant us your bountiful paradise. Ya Rabbi, at the day of judgment, Keep Sulaiman, the servant, at your side. O believers, these are our sultans. And with this attitude, with this kind of heart, they were able to rule the whole world. They have inheritors. Our Shah is such an inheritor and he's reminding us about death. If we sit in his sohbat and if we apply it to our lives, that time we will be from those that are in safety. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, in this month of the Holy Prophet wasalam, we should run to apply his words in our life. We should run away from this dunya. We should run away from our desires. We should run away from our egoistic characteristics. We must be from those who are sitting with and serving the people of Ahirat. We should live according to the words of our Shaykh who is saying, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is sen sending 124,000 prophets to remind us, saying, O oh people, you are not for this dunya, you are for Ahirat. And intelligence is ordering you to work for Ahirat. If you are working for Ahirat, 
then we are the winners of dunya and ahirat. If we are working for dunya, then we are the losers of ahirat and dunya. Amin. Astaghfirullah. 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 Lazim, lazim. La ilaha illa wa hayu qiyam wa tawla. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد كل شيء كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له الملك وله الحمد كل شيء كبير لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد كل شيء كبير لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك أنت من الظالمين سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة والروح سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة سبحان كدوس ربنا رب الملائكة إن الله إلا الله يستعين قام صلاة